Last question. Hi, I'm Bruce Seaman. I'm an alumnus of the uh, Graduate School of Business here, and a lot of what you've said in your talk and, and in answering some of the questions have addressed economics, but what are the primary macroeconomic implications of aging? Are there some equivalent myths and realities with macroeconomic consequences? Well, Bruce, I think it depends upon uh, how you count. And if you want to look at the, uh, it's very reasonable to say what are the costs and what are the benefits of an aging society. And the first thing you have to do is you have to decide whether you want to monetize a lot of the things that older individuals do that currently aren't monetized. And you'll get arguments about that. And Joe Stieglitz at Columbia will tell you instead of GDP, we should have some other measure, you know. And I'm, um, if you take two older women in apartments next to each other in New York City taking care of their frail older husbands and they switch and pay each other the same amount, now they're in the economy. They're paying taxes, they're eligible for unemployment insurance. The outcomes probably aren't as good, but now they're in the economy. They weren't before. <clears throat> the other question is, what are the transfers from one generation to another? It turns out that older individuals are net givers to younger generations up until their 80s. So that transfers to children and to grandchildren continue to be very, very significant. So that if what you do is you reduce Social Security payments, the expectation is consumption by older individuals will be more of their own resources and there will be less transfer to younger generations. And that's a, a, a Ron Lee, a professor at Berkeley, has been doing some of this work. It's very interesting work. So we, we're just beginning to try to solve the equation of what the macroeconomics are because of these inter vivos transfers that turn out to be very, very substantial that there could be real negative effects on younger generations that we hadn't predicted. So that's a kind of partial answer to, uh, but it's some of the things that ordinarily people might not think of. Right. Now let me, in closing, let me just uh, add one comment. You've got here, uh, and Dr. Carstensen and her colleagues, and the Center for on Longevity, a very significant uh, assemblage of talent in various aspects of uh, the science of aging uh, from biomedical through psychology, sociology, uh, demography, and so on. And uh, I, I've been to a lot of universities uh, around the country. There are a few, if any, with uh, the, the quality and the breadth of what you've been able to create here over the last uh, several years. And if any of you have interest in, in uh, these sorts of things, I'm sure the people at the Center on Longevity uh, would be delighted to hear from you. Thank you all for your attention.